Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to this house. Today we are in the Dogtown neighborhood of St. Louis, Missouri, exploring an American Foursquare. This house boasts several period accurate features and we're about to go explore them. Before we go inside, let's just take a moment to see the exterior and really appreciate this facade. Before we go inside, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Michael Simon of Red Key Realty for allowing us to film here. Let's go check it out. As we enter this house, there are some details that strike us before we even get into the formal stair hall. There's a knocker on this door in the shape of the Fleur de Lis, and of course, this is the symbol of St. Louis. So that's just one of those things that really helps to tie this house into its surroundings. Now, the front door is original and historical, and we can even see the original hardware here. And of course, this is metal, and let's get a closer look at this. Now, off to my side here, there are these stained glass windows, and these are not quite like the stained glass windows that we've been seeing in the other houses. These ones are themed, and this is going to be something that we see continued throughout the rest of the house with these different scenes of perhaps a Greek temple and a scenic landscape, things like this. So let's keep this in mind or keep our eyes peeled as we travel throughout this house. Now, as we approach the steps, we see these oversized newel posts and of course the all wooden treads that go up. And if we come over here, we can actually look up into this atrium and we can see how the staircase spirals all the way to the attic. And now that we've seen the stair hall, let's cross directly in front of us to see the parlor. And to get there, we're going to open up these pocket doors, which appear to have a mahogany veneer on them, and get a closer look at this wood type. Perhaps some of you at home would know better and could give me a more accurate idea of what this type of wood is, because it's beautiful and it's glowing red in this natural light. So let's go ahead and tuck these into the wall and continue into the parlor. Now, making our way further into the parlor, we come in front of a large window. And if we take a closer look at this, this is the rounded window that we saw just outside on the front porch. And of course, this rounding theme is continued as we can see the millwork along the corners that outline the window here. And behind me is a fireplace. So this is something that is really uncommon to find in these homes, just because a lot of people have ripped them out in favor of installing a gas fireplace. But we can take a closer look at this, and this would have been actually original to the house. Now, making our way through another set of pocket doors, we come into the dining room, and one of the first things that really catches us is how the wood in this room has now changed. So we can see that the wood is now a lighter wood type, and of course, it still follows the same motif of the rounded corners and the grooved edges. And as we come along over here, there is another original fireplace. Now, this has the Corinthian column tops on it. It also has a more floral motif above the mantel. Of course, it might be hard to see on camera, but if you actually feel this, you can feel the hand grooves in here. So this would probably not have been machine made. Now, passing to the other side of the dining room, there is this closet here, and this wood is just beautiful. Come take a closer look at this wood grain. Now, whenever we open up this door, we're going to find a surprise we can see wallpaper that is more than likely over a century old that is recessed back into this closet, completely untouched by daylight. So it still has a lot of its original color in it. Now, passing through the dining room, this is going to take us to the end of the house, essentially. And there are these amazing built-ins right here. So let's check out these latches. You turn them each inwards on themselves, and then you can pull them open and you have storage right here. 
And after we close these, let's go ahead and shift our focus upwards. And we've seen this type of glass before in a couple of the homes that we've been exploring in the area where there's this daisy motif that gives a lot of privacy with the glass, but still allows a lot of light to come through. Now off to this side of me is a powder room and there's not really much in here that's original, but we will point out that it still has the original millwork around the window. And then there's also a vintage light fixture that's hung up above the vanity here. Now traveling across, we're going to go through this flat archway right here, and this brings us into the kitchen. Now, of course, this kitchen's newer, so we're not going to linger in here today, but there are some things to point out. Of course, there are these four by four tiles on the wall with the glazed bullnose that goes above them. And of course, we can see all of these different rounded corners around the millwork. And of course, the millwork's all painted in here. The back door, and we'll explore the oversized backyard here in just a moment, but the back door has all of its original hardware on it and the latches. So we can take a closer look at this. Now passing back this way, this is going to take us through the kitchen into a little niche before we arrive at the stair hall. So come on through here. And this takes us back into the stair hall where we can begin ascending up to the second floor. So what do you say we go check it out? As we make our way up to the first landing on the staircase, we can see the stained glass window that overlooks the steps. And this is just so striking how vibrant all of the colors are that show through here. And of course, we can follow the warping of the glass as it sags. And a lot of people say that this is probably due to the age. Some people say that it's because of the construction, how you wanted the glass to balance. If you have any information about this, just let me know down below because I'm very curious to learn more about this warping effect in stained glass. So as we step up here, we're officially in the second floor stair hall. And we can notice right off the bat that all of these doors up here are not only original to the house, but they also have functioning transom windows above them. And another thing to point out before we travel any further is now the wood type has actually changed. This matches more the millwork that we saw in the parlor and in the stair hall. So if we look down at these floors, we can really see this. Now continuing on, we're going to enter into the first bedroom. So come on in here. And of course we are now directly over the front door. This is a large rounded window and it has its millwork. Next door to this bedroom is the second bedroom, so we can come on in here. And of course, this room is carpeted. It has some wallpaper, which is obviously newer, and it also has this old glass light fixture hanging from the ceiling. So we can take a closer look at this. This could possibly be original to the home, though it could have also been brought in much later. And over on this side of the room is another one of these rounded windows inside of the appropriate millwork. Adjoined to this bedroom is another bedroom, so we can go ahead and pass through the door here and come on in here. This would probably be considered the owner's suite, so we can look around. Of course, there's beadboard on the wall. This looks like it probably would have been newer as this style wasn't really trending in this area around the time that this house was built. So let's just go ahead and glance around here. As we start to explore the rest of the second floor, we cross back into the stair hall from the owner's suite and we make our way down this hallway. Off to this side is a full bathroom and there's not much in here that's original, though it is worth mentioning that we see again that daisy glass that's on the windows to allow for privacy, as well as these four by four tiles with the colored bull nose all in pastel colors. Now that we've seen the bathroom, let's continue exploring the second floor. We now come to a room that would be imagined more as a utility room. It has HVAC running through it. Now surrounding the space, we can see all of this wallpaper. And this is absolutely vintage. I'm not sure 
of what year this would have been installed or exactly what time period this belongs to. Once again, if any of you in the audience know, I'd be curious to find out exactly when the style would have been popular. And of course, we have these vintage linoleum tiles down on the floor in a checkered pattern. And this room surprisingly finished out with all of the millwork around the windows, oversized baseboards and everything. And off of this is a deck, and we'll see that in just a moment. But first, let's peek inside of this closet and look down at the flooring. So we can see even older linoleum tiles that have been laid down here in the bottom of this closet. Now let's go ahead and start exploring the deck. So come on out here, and we can see the painted wood door. And of course, it has what looks to be its historical or possibly original handles as well. Stepping out here and directly above my head, we can take a moment to see some evidence of a filled in transom window. So let's just take a peek at this. And then of course we can see the rounded masonry work as we have a segmental arch that goes above with the former transom window. And if we turn around and look further on the wall, we can see this kind of dotted motif where we have glazed bricks, which would have been very expensive back whenever they were first installed. And this is probably the best example that we've seen so far on the facade of a glazed brick, as it looks like most of the finishes have worn off with time. Coming back inside, we're now going to walk directly forward, and this is going to take us back to the stairs. So once again, we can see these elaborate newel posts, as well as the banisters and balusters that take us up to the third floor. So let's go check it out. As we approach the third floor, we are now on the first landing that pivots before we get to the third floor. There is a window directly above me here. And once again, we can still see this elaborate millwork that surrounds it. And of course, this is very curious because on the third floor or the attic space would have usually been reserved for the maids or the servants quarters. And to still see these elaborate details is just very curious in a house from this age. So let's continue on through here. And of course, the ceilings now start to slope with the pitch of the roof. And the detail that I've been most excited to show you all up here is if we look down, we can actually see an applique on the floor. And if you've already joined our membership program, you might have seen this in the Magic Chef Mansion in our behind the scenes tour of the third floor there. So let's just take a moment to really appreciate this. Now passing through here, there is one more room up here. So come on through. We can now see that the dormer looks out over the backyard as opposed to the one that we just saw that looks over the front street. So let's just take a moment to see all of this. So we've just come out of the back door from the kitchen onto the first floor deck. And there's some more really interesting details to point out. So on this window here, if we get a closer look at this, we can see that this is actually a wooden lintel and wooden lintels weren't really embedded into brick much past the end of the 1800s. So to see a house that was built in the early 1900s with this technology is kind of surprising to find. Now, if we turn around, there's another really curious feature out here in the backyard. There is a detached garage that has been built more in the Italianate style. Of course, it doesn't have corbels or a cornice, but it does have the low pitched roof with the double rounded windows and then a wider front door with a transom above it. And I would be really curious to find out if this is older than the house itself. Of course, I don't know this information, but if anyone at home can steer me in the right direction, I'd be very curious to find out. So let's just take a moment to glance around and see the rest of the exterior. Thank you all so much for making it to the end of the video. I really hope that you enjoyed this tour. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time on This House.